This conference will now be recorded. Great. Um, in the chat, thank you, Dolly, for resharing that. Um, Dolly just posted a link to a Google Doc. Uh, for those who are attending your first brainstorming session, I have created these Google Docs for every session that we've had. Um, just to create a spot where everybody can share ideas even after this meeting is done um, and hopefully go back and, and get ideas from it. Um, because I know one of the benefits of the in-person workshops is that you know you get to get into small groups and actually plan things out and, and walk away with, with at least a program or an outreach or a marketing idea in hand. And so we want to, while we can't completely replicate that, at least give you the opportunity um to continue to share ideas and go back to it and i will send a follow-up email that will have the recording of this session it will have the chat because uh, sometimes there's a lot of really great information that's in the chat that we just run out of time to, to talk about and the google doc so if you don't catch it here no worries it will come at you later and so today we're talking about outreach marketing partnerships all those things sort of come together um, and so I'm going to open up the floor if anybody just has a brilliant outreach or marketing idea um, that you want to share with the group, or if you have a question about something that you want to share to the group, I'm going to open it up to you all. Hi everybody. Um, I don't know if this counts solely as outreach, but this has helped a lot, or it's going to help a lot this year. Um, we've decided to take any, we're doing a hybrid program this summer. So we're gonna have small groups of people allowed to come to our events, and we'll also have lots of take home things to kind of go along with that. But what we've done in order to accommodate more people from our community is we've moved our programs out of the library and into different community centers. So um, we're utilizing our local community centers, which have big open gyms um, because we're kind of a smaller building. But because we're moving them outside of the library, we're getting a lot more word of mouth and we're getting people who not won't necessarily like just different groups, like community groups that wouldn't normally come. So it's kind of doubling up on the amount of people who would normally be aware of what we're doing. So that's helped a lot. Right. Hey, good morning. This is Jonathan. Is anybody um, else seeing? Oh, I was just going to say um, that for uh, one outreach that we're doing, we're sending uh, a video of what you know what we're going to be doing this summer to our local schools. Uh, also, you can do outreach in the form of Zoom if if you find media specialists or teachers who are willing to do that. So. So I know this time last year, you all probably had, you know, your outreach and your marketing plans in place. And then it was probably about this time last year that you were having to suddenly switch gears. Um, is there something new that you did last year that surprised you how successful it was? And are you doing it again this year? Uh, one, one thing we did uh, when we were doing the uh, the, the you know fight summer hunger program uh, we actually did utilize that to do a lot of direct contact with with patrons in terms of you know giving them books giving them giveaways uh, you know letting them know about our resources and things like that but for the most part it was just a feel-good thing that they weren't just getting a meal they were also getting stuff from the library that they can take home and enjoy and so yeah we're definitely gonna do that again uh, we have Salvation Army coming again uh, and they they bring like uh, you know the boxes of basically hurricane supplies is what it is you know like canned goods and stuff like that they'll be passing those out so we'll probably jump on that again. Yeah. It was actually inspired by the uh, the bus driver. The bus driver said, "Hey, you know we got a lot of kids coming up. Do you have any books in your book sale that we could just give them?" And uh, it went from there. We've been having them put. Or last year we had them put flyers in the 
the schools were doing the public, um, were giving out lunches and we gave them to the public schools and the schools put them in, in the flyers or put them in the lunches, the flyers and the lunches. Is anybody else partnering with our schools for advertising? Yeah, this is uh, Amy McWilliam with the Lee County Library System. Um, we are, we're partnering. Um, that's one thing that really has um, come out of the silver lining that's come out of um, COVID is that um, the school district is been, has been a really great partner um, because they're looking for resources as well. So we um, are working on three PSAs, one targeted for each age group, elementary, middle, and high school, um, that we're going to be um, giving to the school district. They're going to go ahead and put those on their morning news um, throughout the month of June um, so that kids hear every morning about <laughs> Page Turner Adventures or cool prizes that they can win um, with the middle school reading program or our summer of service for teens where they can get volunteer hours. Um, so they'll be hearing about that. So that will help. We also create these activity booklets um, that have like word searches and pu puzzles and reading challenges and a reading log. And the school district is going to distribute those like all 45,000 of them to all of their um, elementary schools and um, the public school, public elementary schools and the charter schools. So um, we're really excited with uh, this partnership. Um, and, and I'm hoping that this continues, you know, moving forward beyond COVID. Um, one thing we did last summer that we're, we're not gonna do this summer is actually the page turner uh, programming. Um, this year we're going to use, sorry about that, we're going to use uh, the monies that we would have spent on Page Turner. Um, I really wish I knew how to silence this thing. <laughs> there we go. Um, we're going to use that money instead to buy uh, studio equipment for our branch libraries so that, you know, we can do our own programming. The argument being that you know, we have a lot of talented people uh, at the local level who've already built up a rapport with their community. So um, we're going to have them do their programming. Yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't recommend that we um, continue with, uh, yeah, outsourcing our um, our K through five virtual programming. However, the rationale was that by doing it for K through five having page turner do that it's available daily right they have something available we'll provide the grab and go kits to go with crafts um but then we can focus more on reaching the middle school and the high school um the teen programs um in which need even more of an interpersonal kind of you know interactive rather and more personal type of um, environment it was it was more of a uh, return on investment kind of thing. We were hoping for a lot more click through rate, and it just wasn't there. So agreed, it wasn't there for us either last year. It really wasn't. So we're hoping with greater advertisement, we'll get some more. We're working with our Parks and Rec, um, Lee County Parks and Rec, YMCA, um, and other uh, local camps. Um, so we're hoping that they'll tune in and provide like the craft supplies and things for their kids, especially in the afternoons when it tends to rain quite a bit. So that's how we're trying to sell it. Like, want to keep the kids busy for like 10 to 30 minutes. Here you go. Um, so we'll see, hopefully, and hopefully we don't have to deal with this next year. So we can go back to live in-person programming and do all the things that we love. We have such a small staff that we've only got one per we've got four people right now on staff. So trying to do a lot of our own programming virtually is kind of difficult. So we're going to do the, the page turners for the, the K through three to five group. And then we're going to focus our, our children's person is going to focus doing the um, zero through two and three through five 
and the tweens and the teens groups so that hopefully we'll get more more interaction from them um it'll get it'll give free up her time a little bit more so that she can she can focus in on some other other projects other than just trying to do k through five Hi, this is Becky. I'm from Martin County Library System. Um, and we'll be doing our summer reading program again, of course. But last year we were very fortunate. We were hooked up with um, the community centers in the area like many of you were. Uh, we were able to get our flyers promoting our program and the prizes um, into the, some of the, one of the schools that was doing the lunch drive up program. And then um, we just got asked by um, the partnership we have with the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast um, to see if we were interested in maybe continuing with the Postery Literacy Program, which we've been doing live in one of our outdoor pavilions at our Cummings Branch in Palm City. So we're trying to line up a few things, plus we'll be doing uh, Page Turner and some other uh, virtual events like we did last year in combination with some outdoor events, with weather permitting if it's not too hot. Um, but yeah, we've been looking for alternate spaces to get more programming because we still have limitations on our capacity inside many of the bigger rooms where we hold other programs so some great ideas here today i would also be curious um for those who i know some libraries are big enough that they have their own marketing team um or somebody specifically dedicated to that um so i would be curious to find out from you all um does your library have a marketing team or is that one of your other duties as assigned um and if so, what, what tools have you found that you really enjoy using to create your flyers, to create, you know, your, your marketing, um, your marketing? Well, hello, I'm Crystal. I don't know why it says user. I messed up something there, but I'm over at the Clearwater Library, Public Library. Um, as far as the tool that we like to use, we use Canva a lot ourselves to kind of get a design idea going. We'll send that over to our communications person. We have a form and she specializes in the communications department in creating flyers based on our programs. Um, she will create little half sheets, you know, if we want those to give out to patrons. Uh, just something that's eye-popping to add to trying to have that promotional piece in mind. We are going to go fully virtual this summer and really um, involve ourselves in we're purchasing Beanstack. So it'll be a first for us, but we've heard a a lot of good things that a lot of libraries have it for our summer. Um, other than that, I was really interested in this outreach to to discover and see if you all had ideas during the pandemic. And like uh, Rebecca said, just that we have limitations and things in place with our outreach now. And I used to do a tour of the library. We are a four story building with the roof included. So that was a big promotional piece where we did outreach with schools, with homeschooling groups. It was very popular. It was booked fairly often, but we're not able to do that right now. So um, my idea for outreach was I wondered if any of you had um, delved into doing kind of a virtual tour. I know you see museums often are doing things and hosting things like that. But I um, just wondered if anyone had, had tried something like that. Hey guys, um, I want to second Canva. We've been using it for years. It's great, it's super user great. friendly. And our friends of the library actually use their nonprofit information to get us the full version. So we have the don't have to pay for anything version, which is great. <laughs> um, but you mentioned a virtual tour. I don't know if any of you saw that, like the Memoji classrooms that were really popular over the summer that kind of teachers put together through Google Slides. Um, if you haven't, just Google Memoji classroom and there's like a million tutorials on it. Um, recently, we had an organization, it's like an early Head Start organization that wanted to do a library tour, which they normally come and do with like a scavenger hunt. But 
I had to do it virtually this year. So I put together, it was super basic. It was nothing fancy, I promise. But we did like a little, almost like a library tour, scavenger hunt based thing using the Memoji classroom format. And I'm happy to post the link to that if you guys would like to look at it. But um, everything in the room, um, like all the objects were hyperlinked to different things. So like if you click on the computer, it took it to your website, our website that had all of our online resources listed. Um, if you clicked the book cart, it took you to our children's page with our catalog information on there. Um, and then if you clicked like the screen, it had, I had this little like picture presentation with like a library tour on it. So that might be something you might want to look into. I don't know. I'll post a link. That'd be, that'd be great information on our Google Docs too. We were trying to do something like that earlier. Um, I keep on, I'm, I introduced myself. I'm Judy from Lake Park, Florida. Um, we were trying to do something like that earlier this year, but we were trying to set it up as an art gallery and we couldn't get anybody to submit any art. <laughs> but um, also if you look under art galleries, it's you can also find the same same type of deal. And there's tutorials, lots of tutorials. I'm kind of scrolling back up through the um, through the chat here as well. Peggy said, "One person show." The, the assistant director helps if she can. And Amy, you have a microphone. <laughs> um, but she said they have a marketing and graphics department the end product is beautiful however a lot less flexibility and it means that everything has to be planned and cemented months before the start of the program yeah sorry about that <laughs> were you asking me to talk i'm calling you out <laughs> yeah so we do we have and you know i love them i love them so much um, and, but it adds a lot of time. So, you know, I'm asked to provide a timeline of when we're, to get programs and events done. And I have to add like a good three months just to get the marketing and graphics, um, because there's so much that goes into it. The posters, you know, the social media marketing, I write the press release, but they, you know, they go back and like massage it and make it look nicer. <laughs> Um, because by the time I write it, I've planned and done everything. So I'm just like, you know, it's not as lovely as it should be. Um, you know, so it, it just, it adds a lot to it, but, um, but, but then again, I'm not sitting around, I love Canva too. And I use that for personally, but, um, sometimes, you know, it's like a rabbit hole. I can sit on there for hours designing like a flyer just to get it right. So, um, so I don't have to do any of that, um, which is, which is nice. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Heather from Flagler County Library. It's great to be with all of you. Um, I just wanna let you know, we do not have a marketing department. Um, so we go ahead and utilize social media. We capture emails. Um, as far as the success that we had last summer um, with the virtual programming, we really had very little views. Um, the success the success actually came from the parents that were coming in and they were participating in the summer reading with their children. We were raffling off beautiful gift baskets per age level. We had them all on display in the library. There was there was um, you know a teen basket and then three various themes for the children. And for the teens, we had scratch off tickets. There was various things they can do to try and win um, that beautiful gift basket. It was a great incentive. We, you know, we invested a good amount of money that we could on the baskets. A lot of the adults were jealous because they wanted to win those Harry Potter baskets, et cetera. Um, but that's just something to suggest to you if you haven't considered doing that. Hi. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, 
Oh, hi, I'm Stephanie and I'm from the Orange County Library System. I work with Sarah. Um, so I see her seeing some really cool things about what we do. We are doing virtual tours for our public schools um, and we do have a marketing department. I was going to say that with our marketing department, they create the graphics and they send them out to people who are creating their various programs. So with those graphics, we're able to put them into templates and then um, kind of change them from there to suit whatever we need. So um, we'll have like our Tales and Tales graphics that suits the Orange County Library System, and we can plug that into whatever flyers we're doing. Um, so it, it makes it a little more flexible. We can still utilize those graphics that we have um, to keep everything mainline and, and streamed, everything looking the same, but we are able to switch it up from there. Uh, we use Publisher. Um, for those that are creating the programs, but graphics department uses um, Illustrator and um, Photoshop. So that's all I was going to say. Thank you. And I was going to ask for the virtual tours with the public schools, are you all doing that just with live video or are you pre recording video or are you using something else altogether? So that's a that's a very specific department that is doing that, and I, I don't have the answers for you. Um, I do know that um, we're so we're doing it with classrooms, and I do believe that it is live. That's something that we used to do in the past. Um, I believe it's through Zoom, uh, which is what we've been utilizing uh, for our virtual programming. Thank you. And Kate did share the uh, Google Doc link for the Bitmoji Google Slides tour. Oh, goody. Put in our Google Doc as well. Uh, and scrolling up through the chat, Alyssa from Lafayette County um, said that there are four person staff and only three in office every day. So they've definitely had to learn how to do a bit of everything which I think a lot of us can relate to. <laughs> um, and she said that they're focusing on doing some more online marketing, but they're having trouble upping their numbers. Does anybody have any ideas for increasing engagement for their virtual marketing? Hi, this is Becky again from the Martin County Library System. Uh, we have a social media team, so we got a lot of talent on there that's a lot more techie than I am, for sure. <laughs> but we have started using our YouTube channel last year, and some of our performers gave us permission to record their performances, their readings, their books, whatever they were doing. Um, and uh, we got, we're starting to really build our viewership. So um, you might want to look into some of the opportunities on, you know, look at our website, um, you know, um, YouTube uh, site, and you'll really be impressed. I mean, I didn't load any of those on there myself. <laughs> More of the techie ones among us did, but it looks really good. And we've really expanded our reach over this last summer. So you might want to see how that works for you. I'll piggyback off of that. You made me think with the YouTube mention, we're also utilizing YouTube, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. And two people on our social media team, they're just fantastic. And they've gotten into the Facebook and Instagram stories. I didn't know if anyone had attempted that here yet or not, but what they're doing is they're always asking a question or doing a poll and it'll appear instantly on Facebook and on Instagram. And it really is neat to see how it generates new views and brings new people to your library page. And it's it's just been a fun little thing that some of our youngins on the social media team introduced me to. Uh, one other thing you can do is uh, also got a Linktree account where uh, basically you just get a link to uh, whatever it is you're trying to put out there. and uh, irrespective of which social media platform the patron uses, they'll be able to access it right away. So it's it's super simple. Uh, it's, it's totally streamlined. So you might want to look into that. And it is a very reputable website. We did the same thing with our team, social media team. So Excellent. 
yeah we we're just experimenting with it now and working on it we have one one of our members is very very uh, good at technology and she's the one developing it but it's very neat and looks very easy to use um when oh, you're yeah. on your phone and which is and we're increasing our viewership um through a number of other ways with instagram as well and getting a younger following which is real exciting for us because we have you know a lot of older people in our community <laughs> retirees right um, but we have a lot of teens coming on board with some of our programs, so it's been really exciting to see us get more uh, viewership out of that particular segment of our community. I was reading through the things and I saw the checking with local community groups for an email address, and it gave me an idea. We don't have a whole lot of local community groups. We do have a bunch of condo associations, and they usually do their uh, meetings at our library. So we've got email addresses for them. So I'm going to see if we can start sending out email to them and have them distribute it to their members because that's where most of our seniors live. So that's something that we've kind of been working on too with the Orange County Library System. Um, so while we have been utilizing like YouTube and uh, Facebook, we've been doing uh, live streams through there for our virtual programming and advertising through there. Uh, one thing that we are really trying to work on this year for SRP is to get um, some of those communities that haven't been involved um, involved this year. So we have um, just like a little outreach team and I'm a part of the outreach team. And what we're trying to do is um, reach out and get community partners. So reaching out to Head Starts or um, just I don't know, anything, um, laundromats, people that will, you know, you see children just waiting around, all kinds of different things. Um, and uh, we have community partners that we're reaching out to and we're saying, how can we help you with programming? How can we get you involved? And we also have our virtual community partners who are the people that were like, hey, um, we would like for you to advertise this and in the meantime we will add you to our ocls thanks you page um, for srp so we've been trying to do that and reach a larger community there and get people involved that way Yeah, I'd like to piggyback on that too that Stephanie mentioned. Um, I sent email blasts to partnerships that I have made in the past uh, because we're not meeting face to face, basically forwarding flyers or information on programs that the library is having is a good way to keep in touch and remind them of all the services and resources that are available to the community. Here at um, Clearwater, we're also trying to launch some programming virtually. Um, one of the things we've done is we took our Lego Mindstorm kits and we got admin approval and we were able to let the patrons check out the kits and we're going to go, we're, we're able rather to join RoboFest because they're going enti entirely virtual this year. So that has been quite the challenge to teach through Zoom, a program that used to be fully in-house, but the, the parents really wanted to still participate and have that opportunity for the kids. So that's something you can try to change your program format and see if it could work in the total virtual environment because we're also not doing the in-person programming. Oh, this is Chris in Gadsden County, and what has been so cool is to be able to do um, my outreach program with daycares and pre-Ks all via um, Google Classroom and Zoom. So it's been great to be able to carry those in-person programs, you know, online. And Peggy from Jackson County also put in the chat that they use constant contact to blast out information. We use that here at the Department of State too. But I know, and I don't, I don't think she's in here today. But someone mentioned in one of our other brainstorming sessions that her library had actually looked into getting program information put on the bottom of their local utility bills 
so that when it went out to people, it was on there. And she said that for their library, they looked into it and they realized that it wasn't worth it for them to put the resources in that direction, but it might be worth it for somebody else. So I'm just gonna pop that out there. As, you know, or if I'm curious if somebody else has also done that or something similar and has seen success with it. Uh, I also found uh, just recently people are using their little free libraries to uh, also disseminate information, just good old fashioned flyers in with, in with the uh, free books. And I don't know about in y'all's area, I know last summer, um, our local school district actually set up smart buses and they put them in different locations all around the county. So they were wife, I mean, they were Wi-Fi hotspots. And so the intention there was to, you know, they came out about the tail end of last school year and then they stayed throughout the summer. Um, so I don't know if your school district does anything like that, but if they are, that might be an additional spot to share information in a partnership there. Oh, Clearwater Magazine magazine that promotes library programs. Do you know how that partnership was started? So I think most areas have a local magazine, and I think sometimes starting the conversation can be difficult. I'm not sure. For, for me, it existed when I came on board at Clearwater, but you're right, it's been a fantastic thing because they also put the Parks and Rec in there. So if a patron picks up that magazine, they have, they have everything. They have a whole city worth of this is what's happening and events you can attend. So it's stayed popular and you always have those people who aren't into your social media platform. So that has been helpful to have the written promos, the TV promos, the social media promos, the posters up, just, just everything. Hi, Megan. I see you waving. If you're talking, we can't hear you, um, but it does look like you're unmuted. So you might want to check your audio settings and see if maybe it's defaulted to a different microphone. I could just see the mask. How is that? Perfect. Oh, awesome. Okay. So to piggyback off of that, we have a city newsletter that we uh, that's posted once a month, and we usually send out all of like our program information and uh, any of like our media that's attached to that program. So that um, like, or, like uh, that was said, any of our non really social media friendly patrons, they still have that like almost like newspaper-esque access to see what's going on at the library. And we've actually had a lot of success with that, especially with one of our one-time programs that we're going to have soon. It's called a Books and Bites program where we're having an author come in and talk about our upcoming book and uh, it's in a socially giant 200 person room but we're only limiting to a few people um, like around 50 or so we're just going to spread them out everywhere and um, as soon as that was posted on our newsletter though it we automatically had a uh, skyrocket of our patrons who were just signing up like no problem for that program so we found that like print media for something that is widely distributed it really has a lot of success in that regard Yeah, also in uh, Miami-Dade uh, County, we have uh, 13 different districts with 50 branches. Uh, so we work with local commissioners and uh, our commissioner puts us on this newsletter that he sent out monthly. So it's another way of reaching out with community leaders and again, uh, spreading that, that outreach, that partnership um, with our community leaders. And that's, uh, you know, letting the community know all the great services that are being offered locally.
And I think anytime local city and county leaders know what you're doing is usually a good thing. <laughs> um, Peggy also said that uh, their assistant director has started emailing information to local papers and radio outlets. Uh, she even got as many teacher emails as she could, and now she sends to them too. Our website hits went through the roof after her first blast to the teachers. I know for a while too, um, our local county library, they were also using the Nextdoor app. Um, I don't know if they still are or not, just because I'm not on there a lot, but um, that's another, if you haven't heard of Nextdoor, it's um, an online website that connects people in neighborhoods. Like my neighborhood uses it so we can all get on and message each other. And then we can also sort of connect with neighborhoods that are near us. And then local county offices can sort of blast out information. So like our sheriff's office uses it a lot when there's something going on that you know they feel the community needs to know about. And I know for a while I was seeing our library post about their um their programs on there as well and it's free, and it's free we website. used to use it um then they decided to change the communications model um so that everything has to go through the public information officer so i couldn't post but if you treat it, but when i was using it and you treated it like facebook where you were i was posting when we first put the um the program up then the week of the program, um, I'd start posting for that. And then I, I usually do like one post a day saying this is coming up. And that morning I'd put this is coming up and a half an hour before, don't miss this. Um, it's But you do have to stay on it constantly if you're going to try and do that. And I got good results for the three months I could do it. And then I got yanked from me. So. <laughs> Stephanie said that Orange County also uses Meetup. Stephanie, do you want to share what Meetup is for those who may not know what it is? Yeah, um, so Meetup is one of those apps where you can, well, they have all kinds of different groups. So there are LGBTQ groups on there. There's um, just biking groups. Um, so I know that we have a theater meetup that we utilize there. Um, there are some improv classes and things like that. And so that's just one of the many things that we advertise through there. And people can join the group and get notifications that kind of alert you. And they're like, hey, we have a virtual meetup on this day for improv. Make sure you join us. And then it has the information to our links and stuff like that. So people can um, find these different events based on the tags that you use and um, see what their interests are and the events that you have for it. Yeah, and I know for a while, um, Leon County was using it for the book clubs. Um, Stephanie, do y'all have a cost for that? I, I know, I think some groups have pay a fee to be a an official group um i am not sure um but let me look into that and i'll get back to you yeah and and if they do maybe if you're a nonprofit or something like that maybe they leave it or maybe it's such a tiny amount but if you have a little bit of marketing budget what's that right marketing budget what's that right <laughs> um Somebody from Plant City, I hate to call you Plant City because I'm sure your name is not Plant City, um, asked, what do you think is the most efficient way to gain consent to email a newsletter to all of our patrons? So Leon County just launched um, online library card sign up last year, conveniently before the pandemic. And we have a little checkbox in there that says sign up for library news and the default is yes. So as people rush through and they fill out all the information, um, unless they proactively check no on it, we'll just go ahead and send them our, uh, our library newsletter every month or every two months. Yeah, and I know here at Bureau of Library Development, for the most part, we have people explicitly opt in. Um, 
where they can either sign up through our web page um, or if we're having like a get together or something, especially when we would meet in person, then we would give them a chance. Um, so with the exception of just a couple of our mailing lists, like public library directors or MLC directors, for the most part, we expect people to tell us that they want to receive our emails. And Peggy said that they asked for the email address on the library card application. And Catherine said, prior to COVID, we had to request mom groups not help, not help us advertise our program. We always had a good number participating. The moms groups would increase significantly and the numbers caused havoc. Yeah, I think everybody probably wants to program the program in a way that's manageable. manageable. Hi, my name is Kathy Haig. Um, not sure. Can you hear me? I had to dig around for a set of headphones that had a microphone on it. So, sorry. You can hear you perfectly. Perfect. 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 Um, so, I work at the Mendel Public Library of West Palm Beach, and I'd love to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that we're doing and what's worked for us. Um, we also use Meetup, although I work in the Youth Services Department, and our adult programming librarians use Meetup to promote some of their programs. So I'm not really familiar um, a ton with it, but I know that they seem to get people who've found it through Meetup. We also have patrons who share our programs on Meetup, just like, um, just like another person had mentioned. Um, but it's more of our adult programs. Um, so we are this year we're really excited to be able to offer some of our summer programming outside of the library. We received an IMLS grant that's gonna let us take um, small group tutoring and job help services and ESOL classes out to local parks. So we're really excited about starting that really soon. Um, we're doing hybrid programs, so we'll have some in-person programs for children in the library, and we'll also um, offer the program virtually and offer a kit that someone could check out to be able to have the supplies and do it at home. So we're kind of doing a tiered um, programming approach where you can do the same program in any number of ways. Um, Another piece of what we're doing is um, we found that it's kind of helpful when we work with our, our local schools, we've been sending out information where we send a social media graphic to them that they can share on Facebook or Twitter with a little blurb. So we introduce some programs to them every, like probably four or five times a year, we send emails out to all the principals at our local elementary schools. And we found that they are really good at getting that stuff on up on their own social media sites when we make it really easy for them. And so we've just given them everything they need to be able to promote our programs to, um, to their families. So that kind of stuff has worked kind of well for us. I hate to unmute on you. I'm sorry. Speaking speaking of tales and tales, very upset. Um, Stephanie did post information in the chat about um, the meetup cost and different tiers. Y'all, I am so sorry. Um, weekly take and makes have been popular, and we offer them at every branch. Have y'all found um, that the take and makes have been spreading by word of mouth or by your marketing? 
Um, sometimes it's literally they come in and they're at the desk and we're doing reader advisory. And if there's kids, my staff and I, we're also youth services. So we're very much like, do you want this week's craft? And we always have a sample up on our plexiglass. So they are going pretty, pretty fast. We, we have a system whereby with our five branches, each youth staff takes a week and makes them for the entire system. So you know you're making 130 crafts. However, you, you send them out to the branches and then your week's done for the month. You're just gonna receive from everyone else. But there are parents who object to utilizing social media for their children for the directions or for a video tutorial. So we've started just including the directions right inside of the take and make. And that way, anyone who comes and picks one up from any branch can just go home. The kids can take it out and put it together. And if they want that video component, we've got it. If they prefer the social media, you know, just to just to hit everyone that way. But um, it's been very popular and I'm able with Facebook social media, what I do, I'm able to put up that craft image and let them know the new craft, you know. We had a, um, a cute snowman one back more during the winter season. And, you know, you can put those cutesy little wordings. Do you want to build a snowman? And, and really play it up and, and get uh, comments on the social media that way. So it's been, it's been positive for sure. We think we'll keep doing that during summer. We've had really good luck. Well, really good luck. Usually the only luck we have getting people to do things. Um, we have two uh, children's organizations in town, uh, Bridges of uh, Lake Park and Parent to Parent. And we schedule things with them um, and put, put their meeting on our, um, our calendar and we'll do take and makes with them. They're doing, uh, she's, our ser children's services person is doing two story times with them and they have take and make projects and the kids could just come in and pick them up. And then we also have one with parent to parent, although we don't always do it with this. We, we give them the option of take and make. We also try and do it with supplies that they could have around the house so that they don't have to come in and get things from the, the library that they can just tune in and the supplies are there at their house. Like we made snow using baking soda and um, either you could do it using either shaving cream or hair conditioner. So most people would have those things around the house. So they made snow that way. <laughs> Speaking of calendars, um, are any of y'all seeing success using any kind of a calendar, either on your web page or somewhere else? Hey, we used to do monthly library calendars and we would post them online and we would have them available um, to take home here at the library. I should probably get into doing those again. We just don't have a whole lot of stuff going on because they're still not doing in person. But like I said, we're starting to transition into that slowly. But yeah, we'd have people coming in. Where are your new calendars out yet? I need mean, <laughs> like demanding the next month's calendar. So um, that's really easy to do. And it's people really enjoy those. As part of our website, we have a built in calendar that we can just add to. And then it just clicks the links to the flyers that we put up online. We also use, um, we use our library calendar online. And like with the take and makes, you can also find that information of what the weekly take and make is gonna be on our online calendar and see if, you know, if you want it or not. And then on Instagram, they have something called highlight buttons. And so our staff member who loves Instagram, she's gone on there and she puts the take and makes as a little highlight that kind of moves and everything so that's a, another way that they can um see that take and make but also for the calendar we still do use uh registration on our online calendar for certain programs
Hi, this is Becky from Martin County. Um, we have our social media team leader thought of a great idea, which was to take all of our children's programming that's offered at all six branches in our system and just put them on one document that we send out constant contact. So it kind of shows what, what take and make kits are available, what virtual story time is going on, which live programs, because we do a, a combination of all kinds of in-person. Um, I'm running a homework helper program and we have virtual appointments going on as well as uh, in-person with a partition. So we've been evolving to getting more and more of our people back in the library. And of course, summer reading, we set up our prize cart rate in the downstairs holds area. Now that our children's areas are open, they can come upstairs and get their book prizes. Um, so we're getting more and more of our patrons back inside our library. Um, and it was a long time before we got them all in. <laughs> it took a while for them to want to come back in and find out we were open and stuff. We have modified hours uh, for cleaning and things, but uh, it's great. And we, of course, have a lot of seasonal residents returning to the area. So I got a lot of new people coming around. And just look at, there's a lot of uh, great information coming in through the chat. Chris had asked a question about make and take um, items. So um, a lot of people are sharing that. Feel free to share as well. Um, that's also some information on some of the other Google Docs from the other brainstorming sessions that we've had. Um, and since this is our last brainstorming session for this go around, um, my plan is to take all that information and compile it into one neat and tidy email so that. Um, and, and send it out to everybody who registered for something um, so that everybody can kind of see some of that information from the other brainstorming sessions as well. Um, Plant City said that their checkout kiosks show their upcoming event, events, which have proven to gain attention. Um, Amy said they use Library Market and it makes it easier for folks to find the links to their virtual events as well. Lots of great virtual programming ideas coming in through the chat. Catherine said they use e-notification system included in their city web hosting service with the calendar. Oh, I did forget to tell you all, if any of you are really techie, 3D printing is another great outreach project. We are just now getting requests again, but where you just basically allow patrons at home to choose something that they want to create off of Thingiverse or create themselves, and the library just 3D prints it for free. It's cool service. Very cool. Well, we have four minutes left, um, and so I'm going to start wrapping us up. Um, I had to stash my dog in the back of the house, so hopefully you can no longer hear her. <laughs> the joys of working from home, right? <laughs> um, so I did want to take just a quick minute um, because I mentioned the Google Docs. So I wanted to do just a very, very quick screen share. And one of my uh, teammates has, I do believe, been taking some notes on that Google Doc. Um, but again, the, the hope here is even after we uh, all log off today, that this is something that everybody can come back to and either add to or, um, you know, if you heard a really great idea, but you just couldn't remember uh, some of the, the details. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of show everybody what this looks like. Um, outreach name, if it has a name, I realize this is outreach and marketing, so it may not have a super snazzy name, um, but you know, what kind of outreach, if again, if it's not incredibly obvious, did it cost you money? Yes, no, if so, maybe how much? And then if there's a link that you can send somebody to, which I know we've had some links shared, um, if the activity is in the CSLP manual, because sometimes the CSLP manual does include marketing and outreach ideas or scripts and things like that. Um, and then if you are fine with people contacting you to find out more information about how you did something, um, please feel free to put your name and your email there. Um, as I did say, this will be going out to um, to everybody who signed up for a any of our brainstorming sessions, just because I know that some people, um, 
you know, wanted to get into certain ones, but we, you know, we had to limit how many people, um, cause we learned last year that 75 very vocal people having a conversation at the same time is a lot to try to keep up with. <laughs> um, I'm also going to share a link in the chat. I'm going to plug the flip exchange Facebook group. Uh, this is a private closed group on Facebook through our Bureau of Library Development account. Um, it's not an, a, a terribly busy Facebook group, but it is a great way to continue to connect with new services and uh, summer reading staff across the state. It's also a great place sometimes if I need quick feedback for things like summer reading, um, and I don't have time to get a formal webinar or a formal email or something put out because like you all, we have a communications process. Um, sometimes I can quickly go onto that Facebook group and say, hey, CSLP wants us to vote on, you know, the summer reading slogan for two years down the road. Here are the options. What do you all think? Um, and so, you know, feel free to join that if you have Facebook and if you would like. Um, and then I'm also posting that Google Doc link one more time. Again, it will be in the email as well. Um, and we did record today, so that will be going out. And so with that, it is 12 o'clock. It's lunchtime. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming and spending the hour with us and for bearing with those technical glitches at the beginning. I'm glad you came back. <laughs> Y'all enjoy the rest of your week and enjoy your weekend.